I'm here with my friend Guillaume Bignon, who is a former French atheist. I guess you're still French in a sense. Yeah, I apologize um, for that. A former, former atheist uh, who is now a Christian theologian, and you are a Calvinist, right? Yes, that happened to some people, so I would identify myself as a Calvinist indeed. Now, uh, lots of people, especially new Christians or Christians who uh, don't know much about theology, hear terms like uh, you know, Calvinist or Arminian and might not have an idea of what those are. So you can certainly go into a lot of detail on these issues, um, you know, I mean, volume after volume after volume, uh, studying you know, the theology. But for people who don't really know what these terms mean, um, how would you explain uh, Calvinism versus Arminianism? Yeah. So Calvinism, named after John Calvin, who was the French reformer, um, is essentially a view not about all the things that John Calvin believed. Um, usually when people speak of Calvinism, they have in view his particular teachings about how to reconcile God's control of human free choices and the fact that human beings do make free choices. And Calvin's view was that which was the most balanced towards uh, divine sovereignty over human free will, so that God is fully in control of absolutely everything that happens. He taught that human free will was still morally meaningful. Human beings make their choices and they are still blameworthy or praiseworthy for what they do. But God is in such a control of those choices that he can bring about anything that he wants through the free agency of human beings. And so it's called Calvinism. After him, sometimes we call this Reformed theology because that same view was that of most of the Reformers when the Protestant Reformation began. So you find these kinds of view of free will and providence in the writings of Luther, Calvin, Wycliffe, and then later on some other Reformed theologians like Jonathan Edwards and so on. So what would be the main ideas of, of Calvinism? So the main ideas, sometimes they are, they are um, gathered into acronyms like TULIP, T-U-L-I-P. It's a little bit too long to get into uh, details here. But the big idea is that God being this much in control is theologically coming from the fact that human beings have a very damaged will. They're, because of original sin and the fall of the first human pair, all humans after Adam and Eve have a will that is crippled towards evil. And so, being dead in sin, as the Bible presents it, human beings do not have a freedom that is morally uh, allowing them to do the right thing for the right reasons. That's what Calvin presented it, and sometimes we call this total depravity. Human beings just do not have the ability to please God. And therefore, for them to do the right thing, it takes an act of God by the Holy Spirit changing their hearts leading them to do the right thing instead. And since that activity of God is fully necessary, it leads, in terms of divine providence, to it leads us to affirm that God is the one who is fully in control of just how good our choices will be, and thereby He is in control of what options we will choose. All the while maintaining that human beings with this kind of free will are still blameworthy or praiseworthy. So this is the tension point that critics of Calvinism have attacked by saying if God is this much in control, how can we be morally responsible? And Calvinists respond that there is no good reason to think that one excludes the other, and on the contrary, there's good reasons to think that the Bible teaches both are true. Therefore, we affirm both at the same time. Yeah, and the, the, as far as the, the critics and the adherents, it seems like both sides are, are trying to uh, you know, somehow guard God in a certain way. You That's correct. That the Calvinists are, are insisting on God's sovereignty and they're, how dare you um, challenge God's sovereignty. And the, the opponents are insisting, uh, you know, if you're saying God's in control of everything, then you're saying he's responsible for, for, for the evil as well. And therefore you're attributing this to God. And how dare you attribute that sort of thing to God? And so both That's are right. saying, uh, hey, we need, to, we need to understand what God is and not, you know, not... Uh, uh, try to diminish his nature in any way. Yeah, that's right. And so I don't think it would be a fair criticism of non-Calvinists to, to say that they try to diminish God's sovereignty necessarily, though that might be a valid criticism of some of them. But the big idea is really how do you reconcile those two things, that God is really in control of what happens in the world, which is a, there's a full strand of biblical teachings that assert just that, and yet that human beings make choices that are morally responsible. 
So the main criticism that comes from uh, Armenians, that is the opposite view to Calvinism, against Calvinism is to say that if God determines what we do, we cannot be morally responsible. So they presuppose that incompatibility, and then obviously if that is true, and Calvinists affirm that God determines our choices, then it would follow that our choices are not morally responsible, which is clearly unacceptable. But then again, Calvinists don't deny that our choices are morally responsible, they only deny that if they were determined, they would not be morally responsible. So that's the real area of disagreement there. So how, how would you uh, put sort of Arminianism in a nutshell? What, yeah. what would be the position well, itself? Arminianism is named after Jacob Arminius, who's also a, a reformer, really. Is, that is, he's a Protestant a writer from the 16th century, a Dutch uh, by the name of Jacob Arminius. And here again, we're not describing his views on all sorts of topics. It's precisely on that question of divine providence over human free will. And Jacob Arminius took the exact opposite view, which said that God is not in fact the one who determines the outcome of human free choices. He's, he maintained that if God did that, then we would not be morally responsible. Therefore, he hasn't. So that means that human free will, according to Arminianism, is such that given everything that God does in the hearts and minds of human beings, at the moment of a free choice, they still have the ability to do otherwise. That's the big uh, principle by which Armenians live, that a free choice is one for which you have the ability to do otherwise. And so this raises various questions then, because if God is such that he cannot determine the outcome of human choices, then what sort of control really does he have over the outcome of what happens in the world through human choices? And that's where in the big tent that we can properly call Arminianism are going to be different people identifiable as open theists who think that God does not even know what's coming up in the future. You have simple foreknowledge Armenians or classical Armenians who say that God doesn't determine the outcome of our choices but he still knows what's coming in the future. So they're properly described Armenian as well. And then there's a third team called Molinists which affirm the same sort of free will, but they affirm that God has a little bit more knowledge about our free choices. He knows what has been chosen, what will be chosen, and he also knows what would have been chosen in any possible set of circumstances. And, and so, the so it's in the middle, so that's the view called middle knowledge or Molinism. But all of those people, regardless of how you reconcile divine providence and human free will, all affirm the same view of free will, which is an indeterministic view, wherein God is not the one who determines the outcome, the human free will is the one that determines which outcome of a choice is made. And then they reconcile this with providence in their own favorite way. So in that big tent, you have all of those three teams, and on the other side is Calvinism, which affirms that God is very much the one who foreordains all things from according to the good counsel of his will. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you had Christianity a long time before anyone's using these terms, uh, saying, hey, I'm a Calvinist, or um, hey, I'm, I'm an Arminian, mm -hmm. um, but we, 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 have, we have tons of scriptures, we have tons of scriptures that we're dealing with, and, and uh, there are lots of passages that sound uh, like your description of Calvinism, mm -hmm. and there are, there are other passages that sound, if you didn't interpret them with other scriptures, that, that sound like Arminianism. Mm -hmm. right? It's sounding like we are we are we're just responsible for, for what we're doing, that we're not determined, that we have, you know, mm -hmm. we ha actually have an option. So kind of both sides are, are, are looking for the best way to, to reconcile all of mm -hmm. this and, and, and put it all together. And so your position is that, that, that Calvinism is the best way That's right. to kind of put all this together. So mm -hmm. what, why is it why is it Calvinism? Yeah, well, I think as you mentioned, if, if ultimately we feel like there's different strains of teachings that might incline one in one direction or another, then ultimately it's going to be a matter of weighing those, which ones are more convincingly going one way or the other, and for the scriptures that go in the other direction than yours, what are the best responses that you can have? And in terms of Calvinism, I would say that many times people do reject it on the basis that the Bible teaches strongly that we are morally responsible for our choices. That is, there is a whole undeniable teaching in the Bible that we are blameworthy for our failings and praiseworthy for what we do right. And so, unfortunately, Armenians then assume 
the thesis that if we are determined, we cannot be morally responsible. But you see and why since the Bible you see why would say that, right? Because yes, it's, I mean, it's, it's, certainly. You know, yeah. Yes. And now, the, the, so the real question is not whether we're morally responsible, but we come back to the question of whether determinism excludes this uh, thesis that we are morally responsible. Mm -hmm. And I, I would say not only this is false, it's not proven, and there are even good reasons, both biblically and philosophically, to think this is false more than just unproven. So that's why I'm happily considering myself a Calvinist. All right, thank you for that introduction. Sure.